guys, how you doing? This is Coffee Chug, and in this video, we're going to expand our Bluetooth EV3 brick controller capabilities and coding. And so, in the previous videos, we took a look at two ways you could program using the brick buttons on an EV3 Mindstorm brick to control your robot. In this case, we're going to be now using sensors and a few other coding mechanisms to create. Um, some pretty awesome robotic controls. In this particular case, as you're going to be able to see here in the picture, we're going to be using motors to steer our robot forward, backwards, to left and right. And then in this demo controller, we'll be using the touch sensors and the color sensors to show you two ways in which you could control an arm. And so this is done more for demo purposes. There's no need to have two different control systems for the same motor, uh, but just to give you some variety um, in terms of this tutorial. So what I want to show you here before I, I zoom in and explain all the code is we've got a lot going on. This is the code for the controller, and then we'll get to the code for the receiver in a little bit. But you can see that we have everything just branched out from our start block accordingly. And so what we're looking at, kind of a quick overview, is an opportunity here to reset our motors, to recalibrate our controls. This one here is making the decisions to control how our motors move. And then these blocks here are one way using touch sensors to open or to lift and drop our claw. And this one here is using the color sensor to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to zoom in, but I just wanted you to see that we have all this going on, all in loops um, in this code. And so as I zoom in here, we're kind of going to break this down for you to see, and hopefully it'll make life a little bit easier by, by zooming in here a little bit. So in this first piece of code that we have here, we've got this loop right here. And what this loop allows us to do is we're using brick buttons. It's a weight for the brick buttons here and we are comparing. And in this case we have it set to the middle button. Kind of like what we were doing with our previous code when we were using the brick buttons to control motors. And this is just set to number two for when it's bumped or touched, you know, so we just have it bumped at this point. And what this is going to do is we have these sensor blocks here for our motors A and D. These are the motors that control my demo robot. And what it will do is it will reset to zero. So wherever the position of these motors are, when I hit this button, calibrates the degrees to zero. So when I start up my program, I can calibrate them. If I get going and my controls get a little wonky, I can always recalibrate at any given point in the time that I'm using my robot. This is a nice little feature. It just helps you uh, keep control of your robot to make the, the joystick controls um, as smooth as possible. This loop block here is really the key to making sure that everything works with our robot. This one allows our robots to actually move. And so what we've got here is we pulled down here in our sensor panel, the motors A and D, um, you would look where you got these plugged into. And what we're doing is we're doing some, some math calculations here, depending on how the motor is placed. And so as I move the controls forward or backwards or the other motor to um, the right or left, it's going to capture those degrees. So we're measuring the degrees of that motor position. And we're doing quite a few things here. In this first situation, we're looking to see um, if A is greater than zero. And if that's the case, it's going to come over here and it's going to check. We're using logic then in the switch block. And if A is greater than, than 0, it's going to run through and it's going to do these calculations. If it's not, if it's less than, then it's going to run this. And you can see that our true and our false are the exact same calculations. We've just flip-flopped what essentially is going to be our A and B controls. This is going to allow us to have a robot move to the right and left and so forth. So if we follow this line out, so we're capturing the A degrees, we're checking to see if it's greater than zero, and if that's the case, then it's going to go to true. All right, so let's look at what happens if the A motor is over 20 degrees. What we've done is we've added a math block here, and this math block is going to add A and B together. So our A calculation here, if we follow this line out, is our A motor, the degrees, whatever those degrees are, adding that with 
B here, which is our D, see, follow this line here, the degrees of our D motor, adding those two together. And it's taking that number, this equal, this result, and you can see that we're dragging it outside of this, this switch and we're moving it over here. And that is going to send that Bluetooth signal packet to A. And what we're going to see here in a little bit, that's going to then control our motors here in a calculation that we're going to do. This is going to control um, our A motors, or our D motor in this case, um, and then back and forth. All right. Now, the same thing is going to happen here, and we're going to do another calculation where we're going to take the A minus D, and that is actually going to plug out into our D motor. So one's going to control A, one's going to give a signal for our D motor, and then it's going to wait and, and repeat that. And at every one-tenth of a second, it's going to do a new calculation and constantly send those measurements out so our, our robot can move. Now, down here, what we've got going on, these are four our claw. Now, the, like I said before, this is just for demo purposes. There's no need to have two different command signals to control one thing. But I wanted you to see that there's ways in which we can control our robot. So I've got a medium motor attached to my robot that allows the, the arm to op go up and go down. Um, in these cases, I see you can see here that I'm now just using a in a loop, a switch block for touch sensor 3 and if it's pressed it's going to send a signal of open if it's not this just allows me to check you don't even actually have it have to have anything in here but this just turns the brick lights to red so as i was doing some calibration i wanted to make i wanted to see what was going on same thing happens here um, but i've got another touch sensor plugged into port four um, so I'm using two touch sensors. You could actually have one sensor that open closes, but for the sake of this demo, I'm using two. And when touch sensor number four is pressed, it's going to send a closed signal. And then the same kind of thing happens here. Now, I've got the same kind of calculations going on, same exact thought process, um, labeled up and down, this time using a color sensor. So we're measuring the color within this loop. All right. And if the sensor reads red, it's going to send the up Bluetooth command message. If it doesn't, um, then nothing is going to happen. Nothing happens here. And then I've got the same thing. I've got another color sensor in port two. Same kind of thing. If I trigger color sensor number two, it's going to send a down signal. Um, so this is two different ways in which we can control an arm using color or using the touch sensor. So there is how our control program looks. Let's take a look at how our receiver program looks. All right, so let's take a look at this. This is the code. I'm going to zoom out just so you can see everything. This is for the receiver. So this is for the robot to actually do the commands. So you can see down here, these are our controls here uh, based on our color and our touch sensors. And then here are our motor control movements. And so as we zoom in on this, let's focus on the A motor controls here, or the A communication signal. And so that's what this is. And if you remember, over here in our controller, we were sending inputs based on the movement of these motors. So the degrees of the A motor and D motor, we were doing these calculations. Um, if the A motor was higher than zero, it was adding and subtracting. If it's less than, then it's subtracting, and then it's sending out these text packets, these messages of A and D out. And so this is what the robot receives when it receives the A packet. It's going to display the degrees of the calculation on the screen just so you can see that in your troubleshooting. And then we've got this calculation block. So we went down here um, in our math block. We picked this one here. Um, and then just if you've never used this before, you can go here and you can make this advanced or absolute, whatever it is that you would want to do. Um, and then you can type in your equations here. And there's a drop down menu of all sorts of different options for you. And so what we've got going on here is we went to the advanced. 20 is just an arbitrary number. We're just using that as a gauge. Um, 
for a range of which the robot wouldn't move um, if the motors were in a certain range. You can you can adjust this to make your controllers more sensitive. But what we've got here, it's, it's got this number, so it's going to take 20, and it's going to subtract it from the result that it received over here in the controller. So it goes through all these calculations, whether that's A minus D or A minus B here and plus, and then it drags these over and it sends these signals out. Um, and that number is what is being used over here. So that number is being dropped. So we get to A minus B. Um, so 20 minus whatever that number is. It's the absolute, so that makes it positive here. And then if that number is greater than 20, then it's going to do this command here. So yes, if it's greater than 20, okay, um, then it's going to move the D motor. Um, and if it's not, it's going to stop the A motor. And then the exact same thing happens down here with our D communication. So we have the exact same thing running, remember, in our controller. It's, it's getting these commands. It's calculating all these that we talked about. And it's sending that packet out to D. And that D number is also being processed. And this does the exact same thing. All right. Um, and you can see here, no different. It's just a different number depending on, on the degree of the motor. And the same thing, except for we've got the opposite here where if it's true we have the D motor on if this one's true we have the A motor on so if they're both proving true that's how we go straight and it's when one of these is false is how we turn so if this one turns out to be false then we're going to be turning to the right or left and then the same thing here um, making those motors move accordingly and I say right or left because it depends on the way that you install your motors on your controller to determine whether and where you plug in your motors to determine whether this is going to be to the left up here or to the right and vice versa so it just it comes down to your build but this is how the robot starts to figure out whether we're going to go forward or backward right or left down here then these are just the signals these open and close up and down um, I just use simple commands, you know, I know we're not opening and closing anything in this particular demo, but that's what it's sending out if these buttons are pressed, if touch sensor and port 4 is pressed, it sends out the close, if number 3 is pressed, it's open, and then these are the colors waiting to see red, um, and if those are true, then it sends out those signals. And then we just have over here for the receiver then, when it receives that, what do we want to have happen? In this case, we've got it on for 30 power, all right, um, for 100 degrees. And then the same thing, going the opposite to dr drop or lower the, the claw. So we got a negative power here. The exact same thing over here, except for now we're just using a different command, just so you could see that we could control a robot using color sensors or touch sensors. So it's really pretty simple on this back end, and this is where you can manipulate your code to have your robot move accordingly. You can mess with these numbers to calibrate it to your liking, and then when we go to run it, it works out pretty smooth. So let's take a look at actually how the robot and the controller work. All right, so what we got here is the controller. This one here, as you can see, we've got this stick here moves the robot to the left and to the right and this one forward backward. Now this is designed in a way that it's kind of hard to have the robot move and then trigger the claw at the same time. So we'll show you a way to bypass that in the next build. But in this case, we've got our touch buttons here to open and close the claw and the same thing using the color sensor. So like I said, this is more for demo to show you different ways in which you can control motors and things of that nature using sensors. Um, so these all use the same claw on the robot. This here is a robot, kind of designed and modified from the demo bot found in um, some of the books that are available online and that you can purchase. Um, and so I've kind of hacked it and manipulated it to kind of make it my own. 
um, but I didn't come up with this whole idea myself. And you can see we've got a claw here, a medium motor, just a simple um, way we've got to operate it with the gears and medium motor up front. And then we've got our slider wheels here and then I've used these, some old wheels, these are just my favorite robot wheels of all time. And so we demo the, the claw here in just a minute so you can see that. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you can check this out, how this works. Um, when I'm here, I don't know if this will kind of show this off to the side here. Um, when I use these sensors here, I've got this one here, it should take the claw down. And I've got it in increments so that it won't get caught or stuck. And then this one brings it back up. So we have here, in this case, a controller to open and close. And you can see that it's moving just because my motors here were moving. So I can just hit this button in our code we talked about, just resets it, puts everything back at zero. So the rays here. Now with the color sensor, the same thing. I just have this red, red Lego brick. You can make it any color you want. Actually, the I like red because it actually detects with the this, the skin here a little bit. But I can go here to raise it up and I can use this one to go down. So by detecting the red, we can go up and down or the same thing here. And then when it comes to controls, so what I'm doing here is I'm, I just got my motors facing straight up for my controls here. Um, and then I push this middle button to keep it at zero. And now when I use this to go forward, it's reading the motor degrees. And then I can use this to turn to the left or to the right. And so as I'm controlling here, and I can go backwards, and we're all in good shape. And so as you kind of navigate this out here, let me pan this out a little bit and reset this back to zero. You can see that it's, it's pretty responsive considering that what we're doing here with the Lego motors. So I can go right. And at any given time that I want to reset, I can just hit this button here in the middle and it'll stop it. And wherever my motors are placed, that's gonna be the calibration point. And so then I can just bring this guy backwards. And away we go. So that's just to give you some tips on, on how this works and how you can build some of your own remote controlled robots using the Bluetooth connection and using motors, in this case, to control motors on another brick and using sensors as well to engage the media motor and other motors. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found this helpful and inspirational and get you going on some thoughts and ideas. And in the next video, I will show you another robot and another controller that actually combines both of these motors into one single joystick. All right, so what you're looking at here is just another robot control build. This one a little bit more advanced. You can see this one is designed with the conveyor belt here with a claw so that it can go up and down and we can control that um, using this controller here. And so what we've got here in this controller, the same kind of stuff, I've got the middle button to reset the motors. And you can see this time, this motor here controls the left and right, but we've attached it to this motor. So this one goes forward, backwards, but then I can turn, and I'll show you here in a minute, that time. This frees up the other hand to use these four touch sensors that you can see here. And what these do are the following, in which I'll scoot this back here so you can see. All right. Um, and what this will do, let me zoom in here, is, these touch sensors are designed to do a couple of things. So this one here opens and closes the jaws, or opens and this one closes. I have these in small increments as we have in our challenges a lot of times, um, various size objects for them to grab. And so if we create a set degrees and it can't actually complete that, it'll lock up and then your robot is in trouble. So this is designed, it's slower to, to maneuver and, and navigate, but it's designed to actually get what we need. And then these buttons raise the conveyor belt. And so I can hold this in and it'll just keep going up. So this allows us to get objects at various heights and drop things in. So in our summer camp challenges, we have a scale for the students to drop ducks and other objects in. 
And so we've got that option there. And so we can control the claw with these. And then zooming back out, the way the control works is really pretty smooth. And so in the previous video with the tutorial, we had two motors, you had to use both hands. This one, I only have to use one. And I can navigate the way I want for this guy. And he's got smaller wheels, he's not anywhere near as fast as the previous one, but it gets the job done with what we want to do. And just like the previous video, anytime I can hit this middle console button to reset and calibrate my motor. So if it gets a little wonky or out of touch there, and then I can go this way, as you can see. So those are two different ways and two different controls and ideas for you to think about. Neither one is perfect, but um, with this event build here that I built from scratch, I'm pretty excited about and allows me to navigate, grab objects, move them and drop them in various locations. And then this control here frees up my hand to use the claw at the same time of, of driving. So just different techniques for you to kind of explore and experiment. All right guys, I hope you found this helpful. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. Until the next time, stay awesome.